Welcome, strangers, to this edition of Documentary Insider. This is a little bonus feature for our normal show where we have the opportunity to sit down with some of the people involved in the documentaries we cover on Talkumentary. Uh, I'm here with one of our um, illustrious co-hosts, uh, Sister Lauren. What's up, sister? <laughs> What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Bruh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I hate it. Bruh. Uh, th- so this week, we covered the documentary called Dream Killer. Yeah. Dream slash killer. Yeah. Dream... We're gonna- we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Dream Kille. Killie. Killie. Uh we we uh that was just you and I. Everyone else canceled out on that one. So it was yeah. just you and me. It was actually kind of fun because then we just, you know, got to bullshit and yeah. talk about a, a insane uh yeah, court, court case. case. Yeah. Um <laughs> that was a documentary from twenty fifteen that was about a wrongful conviction of a young man for his alleged role in a murder case all based on the testimony of another young man who dreamed they were both involved in this murder even Mm. though they were not so kind of insane if you have not seen this film yet make sure you go out and check it out Uh, we watched it on itunes then you can go listen to our main show and then you can come back and and listen to this so tonight though we have a very special guest with us over the airwaves he is known for work such as the Zen of Bobby V, World of Jenks. It's about a girl posturized, I believe. Posturized. Posturized. It's not over. All American Family, Andrew Jenks, Room 335. But we are here to talk to him about the film he directed and produced in 2015 called Dream Killer. His Wikipedia calls him the Mighty Jank. He is a- Yeah, I don't know where that came from. I, I, <laughs> I someone, love it. Someone sent that to me. I, I think it I think it might be Alex, one of my cousins, who's fucking I've never heard that before. So. I think it's awesome. But anyway, Andrew Jenks, welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. Um, I was actually introduced to your work by my lifelong one of my lifelong best friends and the producer of this show, DJ. Um, he grew up. We grew up next door to him, yeah. Lauren and I. That's how we know him. <laughs> well, that's fine. We've known yeah. him since sure. he was yeah, since real we were little. we were little booger eating shitheads. Yeah. But um, he <laughs> he still is though. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. Um, how did so you guys work together? He does video stuff and all that. You guys work together. How do you how do you know DJ? Do you know him like well, or is it just kind of a you guys work together? Once? No, this is gonna sound. Um, this is going to sound tremendously more uh, uh, suspect <laughs> and shady and and kind of like interesting than it actually is. Okay. Uh, I hadn't thought of the, like you asking this, albeit it makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, I can't tell you professionally how I know DJ. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Because it's about a. I know him through a project that we were filming in a place, and none of it has been released yet. Okay. So I want to. I'm always on the air of like, I can probably wiggle some uh-huh. sort of, but like I just it's it saves everyone's time from. Yep. Um, but if things work out, I will one day come back on this show. Yes. And it's it will be a pretty. <laughs> it's not what you would expect in a cool way. Okay, awesome. I love That's that. That's really cool. Yeah, so, um, yeah. but he told me about Dream Killer, and as soon as I heard about what Dream Killer, just the premise of it, I was like, okay, shit, this is something we have to do for our show, because this yeah. sounds awesome. Um, this unbelievable story about a person being convicted, or I'm sorry, convinced, a person being convinced that they themselves was involved in a murder, that they weren't Mm -hmm. and also bringing someone else and somehow the conviction going through there was not a minute in that documentary that you put out that i wasn't glued to the edge of my seat going how the hell is this being you know is this happening Mm -hmm. in this way Mm -hmm. we kept we kept looking at each other going it gets worse from here (laughs) you know (laughs) it's insane but you know since i got you here i'd like to know how you got involved in that story at at all so so the original you know conviction or the arrest i should say was back in like 2001 which i don't know for a fact how old you are but i think you're somewhere around my age and 
Uh, so that means you were probably in high school or something when the original things were going on. So you, it's not like you were following it necessarily from the beginning, but how did you get involved in this crazy story? So I was pitching uh, a documentary idea to this, this, uh, guy that I I've become good friends with named Chip Rosenblum. Um, and I was pitching him, a, an idea, as I recall about a, a journalist named Dylan Radigan. And it was a documentary concept. Chip has financed some like amazing movies through the years. He's written his own. And uh, I was pitching him the, this idea and he said, no, he, he, he passed on mm -hmm. it. He did say um, there's a guy who's in prison uh, from uh, Missouri, where, where Chip is from. Uh, and this guy's name is Ryan. And I feel like he's in prison for a murder he didn't commit. Mm -hmm you should look him up and if you're interested i might maybe i'd finance a documentary about that huh. wow um and that's how that started uh was my then uh spending i, I think uh, quite a bit of time um understanding the case reading about the case obviously uh, eventually reaching out to to ryan um or or telling his parents to have him call me if he was if he was up for mm -hmm. it uh, we, we developed, a, you know, a, a, a relationship. I, uh, I said a friendship at one point and he, he was, we can get into that later, yeah. but, um, uh, although we're certainly good friends now, we actually, uh, it's his bachelor party next oh, weekend cool. in Vegas. Oh my God. Awesome. Congrats, um, Ryan. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we probably started talking, I don't know exactly, uh, five, six years into his sentence, mm -hmm. um, he eventually got out after, you know, nine and a half, what was it? Nine, uh, nine and a half yep, years. Yep. Um, and we would talk to, I don't know, two times a week sometimes, or I don't know, maybe, I don't know exactly, sure. but developed a kind of bond that way. I started going, I went once or twice, um, filmed him in prison, that sort of thing. Uh, we'd put out YouTube videos. Um, wow. So you, but that's how I, that's how I, you know, first heard about, heard about the case yeah so you so you kind of got in at, at sort of the ground when he was still imprisoned he was still going through he hadn't even had like his his cases or his trials yet he was still going through all all of that shit trying to get himself you know in front of the right judge in front of the right jury with the right uh you know attorneys and everything so it was kind of so in real time, we were seeing through that documentary and you were experiencing what he was experiencing. Is that fairly accurate? You know, the 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 neat thing about uh, that I was lucky enough to kind of walk into was that so much of the story, whether because we were there or um, seemingly sheer luck, ha had been captured and filmed. Mm -hmm. So by that, I mean... The moment that Ryan was arrested and put in that cop car, right. there was the mm -hmm. camera. Yep. Uh, that's in the that's in the. From there, he goes into the interrogation room. That's all filmed. Mm -hmm. uh, then the trial starts. CBS is interested sure. in this case, so it's not just filmed with like you know cameras in the up sure. in the you know, it's actual like proper cameras that really capture that court case, um, and it goes all the way until until the end where. We we were able through through uh, interest through certain means to get the moment that Ryan um, for the first time in nearly ten years you know was unshackled mm -hmm. and able to properly hug his mom and dad like the 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 access which is you know the name of the game in so sure. many ways yep. uh, I'm like endlessly grateful yeah. for yeah. because it wasn't just the fact that we were there maybe you know. I honestly should know this, but a couple of mm -hmm. years or maybe a little bit more before he got out, mm -hmm. uh, it had also been documented in a, in kind of so, in, in certain ways. Right. And well, and, and to be fair, this all, you know, the film came out, what, nine years ago or something mm -hmm. like that. So a lot of your prep work was even longer ago than that. So I know you, you had told me in an email, like, I haven't really thought a whole <laughs> lot about the film, you know, the filmmaking yeah. process and quite obviously you've got other stuff going on, uh, but that's really cool. And it, it's, it's incredible that, you know, like you said, the timing of everything is, is kind of key to telling this story because we didn't, you know, yeah, we get to see the original arrest in those videos. We get to see the, 
you know, the, um, what do you call the interrogations? We get to see what's going on in, in the court, which is crazy to me because maybe this is just showing some of my naivete, but naivete, but like, I thought that you couldn't like record in courtrooms when that stuff was happening. I thought that's why you got courtroom drawings and things like that, but maybe I'm just wrong. I, I don't. Exactly. That's, that's right. So, um, it, it depends on, I think a judge can ultimately decide mm. whether or not it's filmed, but I definitely, that should be certainly fact-checked. Like maybe okay, it's a sure. state thing or a county thing or the type of crime. I, I don't know, okay. but, um, uh, either way we did have yeah. like, not just the footage, but like proper guys and, and who do this sort of thing that are able to film courtroom cases in a, in a, right. you know, in a solid way, right in a way that you can use in a yeah. documentary and it doesn't all feel like, you know, just complete, you know, it's not yeah. like a surveillance camera or whatever. Right. It, it gives you a lot more to, to choose from. So, you know, you got involved with Ryan Ferguson's story. Um, so you got to know, I'm assuming his parents pretty well. Um, what about Bill Ferguson? So he, in my opinion, and I think when we talked about it, hero. Bill Ferguson is the hero of this story. <laughs> um, the person who kind of re relentlessly went after this, the overturning of his son's conviction. Um, is he as powerful and as, as inspiring as a character in person during real time as you portrayed him as in, in this film? Because when we're watching it, you know, we're, I wanted to get a, a, you know, I'm with Bill Ferguson's or I wish <laughs> my dad was a Bill Ferguson <laughs> t-shirt, you know, um, speak to me about, about yeah, him. That, that, yeah. Yeah. Jeff, that's spot on. Yeah. Um, like I'm, I'm so like that made my day what you just <laughs> said about him because that is who he is. Yeah. And so it gives me literal chills to think about mm -hmm. like you have the opportunity to film a guy like that. And you didn't, I didn't know that going into no. it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, uh, uh, he's, you know, certainly he was like a dedicated obsessed. And I don't mean that in no, a bad way, sure. dad over, over the case. Um, I can't seriously talk about the making of this movie without, uh, we had, we had an editor who has since passed, unfortunately mm -hmm. named Sam Lee and Sam, was the, is the best editor I've been lucky enough to like ever work with hands down, not even close. Yeah. And she, she really shaped this movie in, in, in the way that you are able to hopefully enjoy it, take something from yeah. it. And, and one of the best examples of that is when looking at the footage and thinking like, wait a second, we've always thought of this as the Ryan Ferguson movie. Right. Mm -hmm. Actually it's the Bill Ferguson movie. Absolutely. Yeah. And so like, the whole kind of approach to the film was completely changed mm. um, by a really good editor. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when Jeff, when you say that, Jeff, that's like great to hear because um, yeah, it worked, you know, <laughs> yeah. you said it, he's, he's the hero. Yeah. And it just so happens that that didn't, it just required someone with Sam's kind of talent to, to, to portray that. Yeah. Like figure that out. Cause that's not what you think going no. into it. You're like, well, Ryan's the guy, yeah. he's the star. He's the, good looking 27 year old also. Right. But, but if, if it were just left to Ryan Ferguson, there's a good chance that because he was incarcerated at the time, he'd still be sitting behind bars. Exactly. And oh, well, no, 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 there's not a good, that's, there's yeah, no, right. I mean, yeah, yeah it, it would have, it would have, you know, without Bill being out there on the, on the streets and doing what he did and putting up the billboards and making the car wrap and doing the, <laughs> you know, just pushing. And found pushing. witnesses though. Forget he not just like yeah. the advocacy stuff, you know. He actually changed the case. Yeah, he was like feet on the ground doing the police's work. Yeah, <laughs> like hold on. So you told me that they never asked you. You told them that that wasn't That's him, right. and yeah. and he That's right. and they, he never brought Good that up. Memory. Well, now yeah. well now we're now we're getting into a a lawyer, a prosecutor who is leaving stuff out willingly. Mm -hmm. Well, that changes everything mm -hmm. in this case, you know, and so that's right to, to be violation. Right, mm -hmm. right. So anyway, and, you know, I have got a lot of things I could say about Mr. Crane, the honorary Mr. Crane. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, but, you know, maybe we won't get into that. I hate maybe to... Missouri should not allow cameras in their courtroom because I think I wouldn't have hated him as much if I hadn't seen him in action. Right. Well, then every <laughs> everything should be on video if right? you ask me. No, no, I yeah. totally. You know, the, the last thing I'll say about an editor is like, mm -hmm. um, just because I, when I think of this movie in terms of how it was made, I, I've, I've never, I don't know if I've ever worked on a project where the editor makes that level of difference. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, and there's this line, I want to say Philip Seymour Hoffman said it, but that doesn't, I don't, I don't know. But um, it's that with documentaries in particular, if there, the editor is kind of like the chef, mm. a, a great chef. And so like, if you give a, a, an amazing chef, terrible food, mm -hmm. they might still be able to make a great mm. meal. And you give, you know, you give a, a chef who, who has awesome food, but they're a bad fucking chef. Mm -hmm. It ruins it. And that's an editor in documentaries. Yeah. I, you know, you could give someone gold and they could fuck it up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other way around too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've always, you know, thought about that with that. No, I love that. And you know, we, we actually did a, an episode of insider with a guy named Jeff Fierzig. He did a documentary we, we covered called the devil and Daniel Johnston. And I had a similar uh, conversation with him about, you know, how much of this is written for you, you know, just by the story being told, mm -hmm. you know, you guys were, were presented with, with in, in, the, I guess the, the opportunity to, to see in real time how this thing unfolds. And, you know, it's a compelling story in and of itself, but like you said, it takes the editing, it takes mm -hmm. the filmmaking as, as a whole to show that in a way that keeps Lauren and I glued to our seats, mm -hmm. you know, and, but at the same time, you know, Jeff's comment, Jeff Fierzig's comment was, but it's all about story. It, like you said, you can, ha a great chef can make a decent meal with shitty ingredients, yeah. but if you've got anything more than a decent chef and, and quality ingre ingredients, that's where, where mm -hmm. your money is, mm -hmm. you know, find the quality yeah. ingredients, get a group of chefs to, to work on that. And you just made yourself a, a killer meal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I love that. And that's the thing about documentaries. I think that's really through the run of our show. That's really kind of, uh, gotten to me is how much of the, the really, really compelling ones are because of somebody like yourself, Andrew, being not to not to take anything away from the work that you do to put yourself out there and find these things, but but somebody having the right ingredients mm -hmm. at the right time for the right audience and, and being with the right team to put it all together, you yeah. know, and I don't know if you have anything to speak to that, but that's, you know, it's crazy how much of that is, has to be kind of um, organic. Like the stars have to align right. for that to happen. I completely agree. And one thing that's, that's, that's fairly in the vein of what you're saying is I had this producer that I worked with and she, she was super smart. And she said, we've been working on a project. It wasn't going great. And she said, you know what we're missing? We're missing those moments where an audience would be watching and they'd be like, holy shit, I can't believe the camera was there when that yeah. happened. Mm. And it's it's Jeff, it's kind of a little bit of that. Maybe the words luck, mm -hmm. whatever yeah. it is, maybe maybe hard work, effort, persistence will also help create mm -hmm. that kind of like luck. But but there we hadn't had that. And I thought that was such a like tangible mm -hmm. way of being like, yes, you're right. We do not have that. Yeah. And yeah. once we find that, that's what's going to maybe put us over mm -hmm. where where we're what's something that we're missing right now. And, you know, luck in those. Sure, that's something. But you're much, you know, for example, you're not going to hit the Powerball if you never play the Powerball. Right. So the more you play into the Powerball, you're, the, the more your chances go up to win that jackpot. Well, if you... Andrew and your team are out there looking for stuff and digging through things and and looking through the files and watching the footage and talking to the the people involved. All of a sudden, you're opening yourself up to be in the right place at the right, right. time. Um, whereas if you're just sitting there going, "Well, as soon as I get, you know, as soon as my agent finds me the right thing," well, no, like that's not really how I don't <laughs> think how a documentary works. You're you're here to yeah. Find I the imagine story. the only other thing would be if you're a really I'm kind of just brainstorming, yep. but if you were kind of a, if you were a uh, really brilliant director and or editor in documentaries, are you able to still create or and or edit moments that where you actually weren't there mm. in that moment, mm -hmm. but you somehow have the ability to manipulate again, not in a bad way, the footage right. to make it feel like that? Mm -hmm. That's that's an interesting. You know, that could sure. be another way of thinking. Right. You could you. It, 
depending on, you know, you have the after the fact, but yeah. can you still get the same effect? It's all about the perspective. Like, right. Because us watching, we don't know. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's why I ask you, you know, we, we talked upstairs a little bit, uh, like pre-recording where, you know, I, I, where we, and you've already answered this, but where we said, I'd love to know at what point did Andrew get into this story? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the fact that, that it seemed like you and your crew were part of the story from the time he was arrested in 2000 yeah. what one to, uh -huh. to now, you know, that's, that's it that should be a compliment to you and your team um, for making us even wonder about that right. because we were invested in it the whole time and we didn't feel like, oh, well, there's all the historical footage right. and here's all the... There's not like a, no. a point where you can tell right. when you guys came, actually came in, yep. which is a, a Yeah, no, that's great to yeah. hear. I'm, I'm, that's, that's, that's great to hear. And again, it, it's also a little bit of luck because it had been... No, that's interesting. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm glad to hear <laughs> no, it. No, it's all good. Um, so, you know, a lot of times when we watch documentaries, not everybody gets the resolution of their of their film, you know, in the time yeah. that they decide to to put it out, you know. And mm -hmm. we may get a real compelling story. You may have a filmmaker that goes and and he he finds this really cool story. He he or she they find this really cool story they go out and they 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 create this this narrative and then you know it stops that person's still sitting in jail or there or mm -hmm. you know the there's hasn't been any resolution and i know like for example i don't know what one of the the films we did was um called the amazing jonathan and by the end of the film you know they're talking he's talking to the filmmaker going I know it would make a compelling story for you if I died and you're waiting for me to die, but that's hasn't happened here. And, you know, so it's like as the filmmaker, you're going, shit, I am just sitting here waiting for him to die because that would wrap up my story. Like <laughs> that's fucked up. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. but you got fortunate enough and, and I'm well and, and I suppose I don't know how many years you, you worked on that, but. Um, we were lucky enough, I get to see kind of a conclusion to this, although we didn't see um, Charles uh, Chuck Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Erickson, getting out. Erickson, yeah. Erickson, yep. Um, we didn't see him get out because that didn't happen until 2003, right? Very recently. Yeah. 2023. Yeah, I'm sorry. 2023. <laughs> to, didn't we went back in time? And, no. 2023, right? So we're seeing a lot of the real time conversations. Where were you in? In the vicinity, were you at the camera when Bill and Leslie Ferguson got the call from uh, um, Kathleen Zellner? Yeah, Zellner about Ryan's release. Like, how did you hear that information? So I was with them um, the day that he got out, mm -hmm. driving around in their car. Me, That's him, so cool. Uh, his girlfriend at the time, and uh, yeah, Leslie and Bill, right. and. We were driving around. There was confusion as to where he was getting out. Mm -hmm. um, they said different things. It was a total, you know, frenzy. Sure. Um, the yeah. The, oh, the moment that they got the call, I think uh, forty-eight hours. Um, and this amazing journalist, Aaron Moriarty, were doing had been following this case for a while, okay. and that was footage that they hadn't used. Maybe there was a portion of it they used sure. and Aaron and CBS who were very nice to us. And I was like, do you, do you mind if I watch the whole, just the raw tape? Right. Cause obviously 48 hours is sort of like much. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they were like super cool. I, that's how I think that, that actually, that footage was found. Yeah. Nice. So you had, had kind of cultivated a relationship with the family throughout this process can you tell me how you heard the information how you heard that the news that he got out that he you know because we find out in the documentary that it's not like you know a lot of times you hear like hey they're they're talking about it he's going to be out within the next two years or whatever he basically from what it sounded like was told nope we're throwing this out right now let that man out of jail out of prison and so you get that that word. How are you feeling? How do you receive that? Do you remember? Do you remember the time when when you when you heard that? And like, how, how, what was that like for you? Ryan is is unique. 
Ryan and I always got along outside of just kind of my following and capturing his story. Mm -hmm. Um, We had very like similar interests and kind of outlooks on things. And so we've become really good friends. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in in a very kind of, I hate this fucking word, but like organic way. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he's like buddies with all me and my high school buddies. Uh Um, like we've gone on summer vacations together, oh, wow. the whole, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so of, yeah, certainly like, of course, remember when, when we heard he was getting out, we had a strong inclination that it was going to happen at a certain day and more or less time. Okay. But, um, we had also thought that many times, certainly Ryan had thought right. that many sure. times before. So no one's, no one's hopes were actually that high, but it, it, it was definitely a known thing. It was, yeah. it was likely you know, happening. Um, but of course, you know, they, they created an absolute mess and melee for the Ferguson family until the very end sure. where the cops and government were, were, no, I shouldn't say the cops. I, I take that back. The, the government, um, uh, were giving the, the family different instructions as to where Ryan was being let out and how it was yeah. going to be done. Oh. And it seemed very intentional and they did it on anyway. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. And you know, to us as we were as we were discussing this this documentary and this situation i guess um a big part of the the frustration of this is how clear it is that a system is covering itself you know it's it's watching its own back it doesn't want to overturn things it doesn't want you know because if we start going back on what our people and our systems and our you know attorneys and our judges and whatever it may be if we start going you know and 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 looking at those and overturning them or second guessing them then we may be opening a giant can of worms and we also may be ruining our own reputations in the process (laughs) which you know could get people in trouble and all that and we don't want that because we're, you know, we, we want to make sure we look out for each other. Well, that's not justice. That's not, you know, that's not truth. Mm-hmm. That's that's us watching out for ourselves or them watching out for themselves. And, you know, so I got to imagine that, that that is one of the most frustrating things. And to find out that he's getting, I mean, I'm jumping out of my seat when I see that on the film. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine what, what you they everyone that was involved and and gotten close to you must must have felt like um in in that time what what i'll say about that in terms of ryan ferguson is like you know it he i also look up to him in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. uh i never they never had any he he or his father or family ever had any sense of self-pity they never were like why us Mm -hmm. you know why are we of all people being forced to live with like a nightmare Mm -hmm. um and and so uh they just are very kind of like stand up admirable humans right um and and that's the other thing about about ryan you know uh and how he's been able to like kind of uh take on everything yeah and and we even ta- saw in the film you know when he's up against uh kevin crane in those trials you know there's a, a specific spot that It just shows the cool, collected demeanor of Ryan where he's he's being uh, asked by Crane like or no, I'm sorry. Ryan says something like, well, you know, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal because I was I I didn't do anything wrong. And 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 he's like, like, how would you feel if you were said you committed a crime? And and Crane goes, Uh, well, I didn't commit I, I didn't commit any I didn't do anything wrong. And Ryan goes, well, neither did I. I. And he just said it so cool. He just said it so collected. He wasn't like, he didn't stand up and scream. That's right. Good point. Everyone starts clapping. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And and Lauren and I were even saying like, how are you not jumping over, you know, when, when Crane is my blood boil. Right. And (laughs) when, when Crane's saying like, you know, you, you called, you called Erickson an odd guy. Is that true? And then he laughs, he he chuckles a little and he's like, is that funny? Is that funny to you? You know, I I just thought you were, it's America. You can, you could say, you know, was that funny to you that he, you know, it's like, dude. The attempted or or Mm. the the attempted manipulation Mm -hmm. and like mind games were so elementary Mm -hmm. that the fact he's already a seemingly, you know, corrupt and immoral guy, it added to like the fucking frustration you have when watching. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I, I feel like there, this story has had an impact on me and I'm on the outside looking in, Yeah. you know, is there a, 
know what I would say, Jeff, though, really quickly, sure. as I as I kind of said that. That said, I'd love to hear his side of things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Kevin Crane, like he's obviously been offered that many times and, and doesn't hasn't taken up taken it up until the kind of some of the narrative and facts changed. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I bet Ryan would agree with that. Yeah. Like like tell us what we're missing. Like right. I'm you know, I, I don't want I don't want to not like someone. Yeah, and you know, there there's a bias there, whether or not it's and that's mostly because you're not getting the other person's story, the other side of the story. You're only getting kind of one side. And that's not because you didn't ask for it. It's just because it hasn't been given. It hasn't been offered and, and all except, that. Except, Jeff, for the except for the, the moment that matters more than anything, which is the core case. Mm. Mm-hmm. We got objectively both of their sides sure. that no interview or anything like that to me was like, yeah, you know, the Coliseum like that was mm-hmm. it. What what I'm wondering is, and, and this might not even be where I was at because I, I did lose my train of thought just a little bit, but is there a time during the making of this film that you consider to have had the most impact on you? Because I feel like I was impacted by this story. And, you know, whether it's just another story that we that we know, lawyer up, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. if nothing else, lawyer up, or if it's if it can happen to to these guys, it can happen to anybody. Um, you know, whatever it may be, is there something in this that stands out to you as being probably the most lasting impact on you? And it's okay if you don't have like a, a single answer here or anything like that. No, I have a couple. Okay. I mean, one would be that Kathleen Zellner, who saved Ryan's life mm-hmm. essentially, and is a is a is a god in 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 her world in, in many yeah. ways. Um, you know, I was I was talking to her about how I was just shocked at at how it's not that hard to manipulate the just the judicial mm-hmm. system, if which is a longer maybe conversation, <laughs> and, and maybe that's not, maybe I'm not even equipped to say that sort of thing. Right. It's probably someone smarter to, to get into it. But my, my what I'm trying to get at is that Kathleen Zellner said to me. Um, Listen, I could frame Mother Teresa if I wanted to. Mm. Damn. And it's just like, that's what I learned more than anything is if two people have an agenda, mm-hmm. you know, they can say that that unsolved, that's what happened. That right. unsolved murder over there. But yeah, that was this guy. Okay. Don't, like, I think that to me is one thing. Yeah. The other thing that I'd say, which is bigger than maybe even that, was um, Ryan and Bill's kind of uh, approach to the whole case, which we've pretty much talked about, but with Bill specifically, uh, he was always just about the facts, which is funny because in, in the end, the movie is kind of a, a father hero yeah. story, but mm-hmm. he always avoided that kind of narrative for him. It was like, yeah, Andrew, you want to ask me about how I'm feeling and my emotions and what's dr-? He's like, I don't want to, he didn't want to talk about that. He was like, so what Ryan was doing on the night this happened, mm. the court case, like yeah. he was relentless and stubborn when it came to like, I get you have your wet your approach, but the only thing I'm interested in talking about are what the facts are of the case. Yeah. And he, the facts. It was pretty impressive. Let, let's get to the facts because that's what's going to get my son out right. of prison. Not not, not me feel. feeling yeah. shitty about it. That's yeah. not going to do anything. If anything, probably yeah. from where a father's sitting, those those feelings, those emotions are going to water down this narrative. If mm-hmm. anyone's watching it, if anybody sees it, if we start, if I start getting into, if I talk to someone in, you know. If I talk to a a uh, a judge or a Kevin Crane or a Kathleen Zellner or any anything like that, the people that are are here to to determine my son's fate, if I even talk about what I feel about it, all that's going to do is turn on their their uh, radar or whatever alarms bells saying, you know, okay, we're getting away from this. This is getting too diluted and whatever. His his focus. He was sounds like he was laser focused mm-hmm. on saying. Nope. Like I just, the, 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 the facts here are that there's no facts. Right. There's no evidence. I'm sorry. No, not no facts, but no evidence against my son putting him where, because he wasn't there, mm-hmm. you know? And, and to me, I agree with you. That is a huge, huge inspiration. Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> how I feel after this is all wrapped up after I get right. my son out of prison. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, that was one of my favorite lines, I think in, in the film was when he went outside and the the press was kind of there to talk to him and he goes, uh, let me go get my son. I, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me while I go get my son. Yeah. And the only, the only, the only reason I, I ran, you know, remember that when I haven't seen this in mm -hmm. in six or seven years, probably 
is that I, I thought, and I was probably wrong, that that should have been the title of the movie. Oh. Excuse me while I go get my son. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the only reason I can cut you off and be like, it's excuse me. I, yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember I, I was trying to build a case for yeah. that. Um, how did you come up with the name for it? How, how did you guys land on that? You know, I think if I remember correctly, dream killer for kind of obvious reasons, sure. um, kind of a, you know, it's short, it's, 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 you know, pithy. Mm-hmm. It very much speaks to the core of, of, of what the question is to me. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's intriguing to me. I'm kind of like, okay, what's this about? Especially for a documentary, mm-hmm. you know, like documentaries sometimes have the mis. It's changed, but sometimes it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to listen to like a textbook or something right. that I'm learning about. Mm-hmm. And Dream Killer sounds like a horror mm-hmm. film or something, yeah. and I kind of like that sort of play on things. And I think that's why we went the extra slash maybe ridiculous step of of putting in the uh, the slash, you know. The, the slash there <laughs> mm-hmm. um we, we but i'm all for mixing i'm all for mixing it up so sure. we had this great producer on the film named brendan crane who was great mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it was his idea but i remember he was making the case for it and uh yeah i'm, I'm all for yeah, it I, cool. I was skeptical first. we we uh we had a conversation on our show <laughs> on on what the correct correct pronunciation like do you say the slash is it just dream killer right. you know dream slash right. killer and then if you're looking it up I, I like clarity in life and and it does not provide that which was one of my hesitations <laughs> right. yeah no and and then you know we we went into calling it dream killier K- dream killier yeah, yeah anyway um okay so let's see silly. you know I, I was gonna ask you a little bit about your uh your what kind of contact you still have with ryan but of course it's uh, you know sounds like you're uh you're pretty close to him still which is awesome what about chuck do you have any communication with him was he a part of your your story at all in this yeah two things i mean one i I kind of forget but after ryan got out we actually um created an mtv show called called unlocking the truth ryan ryan and i ep'd it uh, along with some other great people and ryan also co-hosted it and ryan and his co-host actually found i think um well, no, I know they found evidence that helped uh, contribute in, in its own way to the release of of uh, of this 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 guy out of uh, Carolina, mm-hmm. really really amazing guy. And so um, he had been wrongfully incarcerated for like twenty years. Jeez. And and in terms of Chuck, um, he's he certainly reached out uh, to me through the years. Um, I was always very like grateful that he let us go and interview mm-hmm. him. Um, you know, he definitely didn't have to do that. I, it it might've been a risk to his, right. to his case. I, I don't recall, but, um, he did, I feel like we always, and in some ways maybe learn from Ryan, um, treated Chuck with a lot of respect mm-hmm. and, and, and absolutely zero judgments mm-hmm. and just tried to, again, take a page from Bill almost and just follow like, what were the facts of the case? Right. We're not here to, right. Yeah. Bash um, somebody, you know, you could, you the funny thing, or not funny, but but the the interesting thing about all that and about watching this and talking to you about what the Fergusons are like. So you've got Chuck Erickson, who um, could very easily fall into the realm of this is our villain. You know, mm-hmm. this is the person who Easy. who erroneously made a claim based on a dream that he had that he somehow connected to a a murder case that happened. You know, and. And because of all that, my opinion is because of all of this, we still don't know who who killed um, God. Um, Keith, right? That's right. Keith. We still don't know. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm. For, I'm. Is it Keith? It's Keith, right? Um, Keith. Uh, what? Oh, Heidhold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, you know, and and it's probably because the the law enforcement thought they already had the right. P- I don't know. That's all speculation, of course. But you know someone who could very easily be the villain. I I could see myself holding a lot of resentment mm-hmm. towards Erickson if I were a Ferguson. Yeah. <laughs> because. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're not in that business. No, and They're like, that's wasted energy. And that's yeah. so that's, respectful or respectable. Is. And, yeah. and I just, I, I wish, I wish I knew about myself, whether I had it in me to, to 
treat someone in that yeah. way, but I don't because yep. I've never been in this situation. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And, and I think I think Lauren even said very well. Put. I think Lauren even said in our in our episode that because I asked the question like, how do you think you would respond if it was your if, if it was your family? And I think she even said, well, I sure right. hope that I could come anywhere close to a Bill Ferguson. Yeah, but who knows? Yeah, you know, I that's right. It, it's it it's very respectable, and um, you know, so I I think that's. It's really cool that they haven't villainized him, mm-hmm. um, even though it would That's be right. really easy to do. Very <laughs> easy exactly. to do. Okay, so I've got a couple more questions. If you've got a little bit more time, sure. okay, we're gonna we're we're yeah. gonna come a little bit away from the uh, the the documentary list. So you've been involved in a whole bunch of very different types of films and TV series. Um, so Andrew Jenks, Room Three Thirty Five, about you moving into a senior living facility back back when you were nineteen, <laughs> which. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Um, the Zen of Bobby V, which is a baseball film in Japan, yeah. um, a TV mm-hmm. series called World of Janks, where you move in with strangers. Is that? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, it's not over. Looks at the HIV mm-hmm. uh, AIDS epidemic through the eyes of the of millennials. Um, All American Family about a deaf football team uh, unlocking the yeah. truth which is what you talked about, oh, the yeah. MTV show um, involving Ryan Ferguson, all that, and, and a, couple, a couple other things. Um, so first we know you like to move in with strangers. Um, so there's at least two things in there where you go live with people you don't know. Um, and second, you put out and you pull off a lot of really cool things. Um, do you just have a wide array of interests? You know, I don't, I don't see a lot of filmmakers that – that stray that, you know, you've got sports, you've got true crime, you've got, um, you know, th- those are kind of, I suppose the, you've got HIV aid epidemic. Um, and then, you kind know, of a reality. Yeah. Sort of, of a reality to- show kind of thing. You know, what, where's that come from? Is it just a wide array of interests or do you have like a, a favorite? Do you have, um, something that you feel like is more rewarding than others or, or can you speak to that at all? Yeah, there's been podcasts, there's been mm-hmm. documentary shows and then documentaries, some of them I'm in, some of them I'm not. There's been like uh what you're saying makes makes total sense and I think sometimes it's a little bit it might be to my career a little bit of a detriment because people like people that are very good at doing, you know, a certain genre quite a bit. Yeah. Um I think I don't know why that is. It's it's why it's kind of it's kind of gone that way. I think that's a good question. I think that I really like uh, telling the stories um, of like overlooked, misunderstood mm. people. It sounds really cheesy, but it's like if HBO will pay for my movie that I, where I went and lived in a nursing home, like that. Like to me, that's if MTV will give me a bunch of money to like live with a homeless girl in one episode, mm-hmm. a kid with autism for a year. Like, um, so I think I kind of like might really enjoy those stories yeah. and whoever wants to pay me and allow me to tell them right. in some sort of form, mm-hmm. I'm down to like mm-hmm. try and finagle a way to, mm-hmm. to like make that, make that work in a, in a way that I, um, that I like. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sure. And you know, I, I feel like, you know, Lauren and I, I've known her for a long time, my whole life. So, um, Lord, I can speak to her. 40-ish yeah, years. Yeah. Um, I resonate with that because we have tried and done a lot of different things in our mm-hmm. lives. And, you know, we talk about podcasts to make or shows to make or or things to do. And, and it always, it's like, well, we could do something about documentaries or we could do something about talking to our mother or we could do something about watching movies or we could do something, you know, all over the place. Yeah, and, it's like a potpourri. Right. A, a, poo, a poo-pourri. <laughs> a poo-pourri. <laughs> you know, but I, I, I just, I, I like that. So you said it could be a detriment detriment to your career to me i say you know i hope that's not the case because when i look at your body of work i go this is fucking cool because you've got so many different things Mm -hmm. all told in you know your style and your kind of your your way you know but to me i think that's a a good thing that Mm -hmm. shows diversity that shows um uh that you're not a one trick pony and Mm -hmm. um do you have something that you find like a, a style that you find more like pleasurable than others or more rewarding, or is it just kind of, you know, depends on what's going on. 
So no, listen, I really I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, right now, with this, it changes a lot. Mm -hmm. So there's at different times. I'm kind of like a couple of years ago for what I, I was fascinated by, like how to do really good interview shots. Mm. And it was partly because I was on a show and the one of the EPs of the show was like, kind of called me out for very unimpressive interview mm. shots. Mm. And I realized I, I very, most of what I've done is verite and kind of following people in real time. I, I, I'm not a big like sit down and interview you kind of guy. And so I got really into like figuring out, you know, how to do that mm. um, better. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I think I, I'm much more interested, uh, at least today in back in like that verite, you know, following someone in real time, seeing what happens, uh, because to me, it's like, you're directing a film, but it's live and you can't, it, it's, it's live directing, yeah. you know, yeah. if, if you do the best when they cry at you normal yeah. in, in real time. Yeah. yeah. If someone cries and you miss the shot or someone punches someone, you miss the shot. If someone, you know. It, it didn't, it doesn't, it, you, what are you going to go interview them after? And that's not, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, can you hit that uh, guy and, again? <laughs> I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So I have a really hard hitting question for you. I, I kind of feel like I'm going a little TMZ here. Um, this is going to make headlines. Yeah, I'm sure. For sure. Um, I'm going to take a risk and ask this to you anyway. Um, sure. how does it feel to have been named number 19 on IMDb's 100 most handsome actors and directors? <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, I, I can't imagine a few things. One, I, I definitely have never heard that one. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. But this leads me to part two is, are you making that no. up? Three. Mm -mm. I can send you the list. Man. Yeah. It's just like a user list, but Hey, you know what? Is it an old list or something? Yeah, it's like, uh, I think maybe when I was on MTV maybe. or something. Yeah. I don't know. But here's the thing, man, you beat out the likes of Ewan McGregor, Chris Brad Evans. Pace. Email this to me. Email this to I, me. I will. ASAP. I, will. ASAP. I, I promise you, you beat out Chris Hemsworth. This is great news. You beat out Charlie uh, Hunnam. You bleed out Channing That's Tatum. You're number 19 out of 100, man. You are a good looking I never, fella. I do not. This is news <laughs> to me. <laughs> okay. Um, so what are you working on now? Anything you can talk about or want to plug that's coming up? Um, obviously, I know um, that you, you mentioned earlier the stuff. There's some things that you can't. So if if you accidentally say something that you need cut out, you let me know. But um, No, 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 no. Um, it's all good. There is one project I'm working on now that I – it's not like it's some huge mysterious thing, but I definitely can't uh, mention the thing that I just did that came out recently is called Billion Dollar Babies. Yes, this is what I want to uh, talk the about. True story of the, the true story of the Cabbage Patch Kids. Mm. It's a, a documentary. Um, it's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. It's about the Cabbage Patch Kids, the 1980s, you know, doll mm -hmm. uh, phenomena. And, and there's a lot of kind of layers and stories behind it that I, I certainly didn't realize um and that is out it was out in theaters limitedly or limited theatrically in november and december i don't know if it's still out now but i i imagine it'll be out in streaming at some point very cool awesome. lauren you had questions about that no i just wanted to talk about it because i'm fascinated by it my cabbage patch doll's name was myrna and myrna i, don't, and really? I, don't I know, know a real life person named myrna really mm -hmm. she elderly getting there okay <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're all getting there. We're all getting there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I I just think it's great. I that's the kind of stuff that I like to watch. Yeah, yeah. anything yeah. about old yeah. toys to me is fascinating. True. <laughs> um, okay, so we covered Dream Killer. Um, if if we were if you were going to suggest one of your other documentaries for us to cover for our show, anything you think we should hit next? I would say mm -hmm. do um, the I always think I've always thought Brett Morgan is kind of an interesting director. Um, and he did this movie called June 17th, 1994. Uh, it was an ESPN 30 for 30. Mm -hmm. um, and it plays with like, not in kind of a, it plays with the form a little bit okay. and is just innovative in terms of approach. So I, I, that would be my, okay. That would be my uh, big suggestion. I, I wrote it down. So I'll, I'm going to check that one out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, Okay, so we have a little tradition, and if you're down, I'm I'm going to um, ask if you'd be interested in playing a short game with us before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your evening. 
Okay. Okay. I put together a few trivia questions about true crime and other relevant things. Are you interested in playing a couple a couple trivia questions? Lauren doesn't know any of this either. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm interested. No, but am I a team player? I'm always down. Of course. I, I love so, the honesty. I, I suck at trivia. I forget things. I need my notes. Yep. This is going to be a disaster. It's no, fine. But let's I'll go. try to. I'll try to. There's no hold the team here. Th- there may be. Uh, um, you may have a better chance at this than you than you think. We'll we'll see. All right. So so here we go. Uh, number one, according to the Innocence Project, in an article from April in 2023, how many wrongly convicted people have been exonerated based on DNA tests that de- that demonstrated their innocence since? 1989 and i'll give you some options all right okay. so the question is since 1989 how many people have been exonerated based on dna okay is it a 186 people okay b 575 people c 621 people or d 1386 people this is a guess obviously unless yeah. you unless you read the stat i want to go with the 600 one you say C six hundred twenty. Can you can you quickly run through those three yep. options? One hundred sixty eight, five hundred seventy five, six hundred twenty one, or one thousand three hundred eighty six. Whatever the lowest number is. You think it's low? You think it's one hundred eighty six? Yeah, let's do that. I thought it was. Let's do that. You said this is the number of people that were that were exonerated. That were, that were sentenced to be killed, but exonerated via DNA? Uh, not necessarily sentenced to be killed. Uh, they were wrongly convicted and then exonerated based oh. based on DNA. Oh, sorry. I was, okay. I told you I was bad at nope. this game. You're good. <laughs> You're good. I'm still going to stick with my 600 answer, 621. Do you have a guess, Andrew? I actually agree. Let's just, let's, let's go with 621. Okay. It's actually 575. <sighs> As of uh, no, we were actually. I mean, yeah. we weren't like wasn't a joke. Off. I mean, it wasn't laughable. Yeah, you weren't like. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> All right, question number two: What famous 1989 case highlighted the issue of false confessions and led to several wrongful convictions in New York? Uh, so, what famous 1989 case highlighted the issue of false confessions and led to several wrongful convictions in New York? Hint. We did a documentary episode. Oh, this has got to be case. the the Central yes. Park. Yep, yeah, the Central Park Central Five. Park Five Jogger case. Okay, here here's another one. Um, attorney Kathleen Zellner yes. gained widespread recognition for her work on the post conviction defense of which high profile case involving Dassey involving a Manitowoc yep. Manitowoc, Manitowoc County man convicted yeah. of murder. Yeah, Stephen Avery. Making a murderer too, baby. Yeah. Yep. Making a murderer, Stephen Avery, is correct. See, I told you you'd do better at this than you thought. <laughs> okay. Uh, what legal mechanism is a request filed by a person who is imprisoned challenging the lawfulness of their detention or imprisonment? In Latin, it means, quote, you shall have the body indicating the court's power to order the release of an individual from unlawful detention. I've got some options if you want. Yes, please. So basically, what legal jargon is a request filed for a person challenging the lawfulness of their imprisonment? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is it A, caveat emptor? Mm, nah. Is it B, in loco parentis? Is it C, habeas corpus? Yes, that one. Or is it D, yeah, it's quantum corpus. merut? It's the one that says Definitely corpse in it. Because you yeah. said body. Yep. And that is on every body wash I've ever corpus, seen. Corpus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Corpus Christi. Christie's body. Yeah. <laughs> Christie's body, you. Okay, last one. And then we'll we'll let you get on, on your way. All right? Here we go. Yeah, of course. Which of these directors or actors is considered to be more handsome than Andrew Jenks, according to the same <laughs> oh, same IMDb Let's, user list. list we talked about earlier? Okay. Okay. Here's your four yeah. options. All Which right. of these is considered to be more handsome? Okay. Arguably, but you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it A, Andrew Garfield? Is it B, Ashton Kutcher? <laughs> is it C, Brad Pitt? Or is it D, Casey Affleck? And I'll say... 
all four of those people were on the list and only one of them is above Andrew Jenks, the mighty Jank. Okay, let's think here. I swear earlier when we were talking, you said out loud that he beat out Brad Pitt. So I don't think it's Brad. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, can you hear my cat, Andrew? <laughs> no, so I can't. Loud. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say Ashton Kutcher. Okay. Just because I don't know who the other two people Do are. Do you think Ashton Kutcher's more handsome than Andrew Absolutely Drake? not. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Andrew, do you feel like guessing? Oh, no, I'm not partaking okay. in this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Absolutely. This is ridiculous. <laughs> All right. I promise I'm almost done wasting your time here. All right. The answer is Andrew Garfield. Who is that? There Spider we go, Man. baby. Spider-Man. Oh, I thought he One was a president. Spider oh, well. Like Andrew Jackson. Or James Garfield. Or James Garfield, no. yes. Um, so so you did beat out Ashton Kutcher, Brad Pitt, and Casey Affleck. So nice, nicely done. And I don't know who that other guy is, so it's fine. Andrew Garfield? Yeah, I don't have any idea. Watch The Amazing Spider-Man. No, he's, he's all right, but anyway. Um, okay, Andrew, it's been more than a pleasure talking to you, man. I'm, I'm so yeah. glad that you uh, joined us for this episode. Sure thing. Thank you for yeah. having me. It was fun to go down memory lane. Yeah. yeah. Ho hopefully, uh, hopefully you had you had fun, and and I will send you the the IMDb list so that you can uh, throw <laughs> that out on your your stuff and and just tell. I, I think yeah. it was from like 2011 or something like that. So. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So there we hey, go. You know anyway, man. I, I hope you had fun. I know we did. Um, thanks for putting. Yes, I did. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Uh, keep putting out good stuff, and we're looking forward to checking out another documentary of yours. Maybe if you're interested, we'll have you back for another episode. So. Um, yeah, of course. Let me know. Yeah, be well, man. Um, to all, thank to you. all of our listeners, thank you for for listening. We hope you uh, keep your minds open and be kind. I almost forgot my own tagline. We hope you keep your minds open and be kind to each other. And until next time, thanks for listening to Documentary Insider. Thank you, Lauren, Sister Lauren. All right. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.